This is Dave, and I'm here with Ethan, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 177-inch. On this episode, we interview David Bloom, the actor who masterfully portrays Teenage Al in Weird the Al Yankovic Story. It's Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al Podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al Podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Hello, everybody, and thank you to everyone who tuned in last episode to hear us talk all about our adventures at the official U.S. premiere of Weird the Al Yankovic Story. Oh, what a fun time that was. It sure was. The Weird Alessance continues. Can there be even more Weird Al goodness crammed into 2022? Gosh, we sure hope so. Without further ado, it's time for What's Happening in John Bermuda Schwartz Related News! Lights, camera, accordion, eye-popping photographs of Weird Al Yankovic 1981 through 2006 was officially released yesterday, November 15th. It debuted at the top of many prestigious Amazon.com sales charts. And for good reason. This book is simply pretty stinking majestic. Not only are there still copies of the incredible box set available for sale over at 1984publishing.com, copies of the regular edition purchased on their site come with a book plate signed by Bermuda while supplies last. Now Dave and I have both versions of the book, and then some, and we can't recommend them enough. The pictures are beautiful, everything in the book is fantastic. You are going to have to get this for your collection if you haven't already. All right, well, let's see what's happening in Weird Al Related News. What's happening in Weird Al Related News is brought to you in part by Well, Well, Well and the true legends of the once great forum, Wowway. In accordance with support for the rights of gays and LGBTQ+, and the people who wash their hands regularly. Thank you, Mark Heidenreich, for the sponsorship. The internationally acclaimed journalistic publication The Guardian published an article all about Weird Al and his new film earlier this week. The article is wonderfully written by The Guardian's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief David Smith and features some of the finest reporting we have ever read. The article heavily features quotes from Dave and I, taken from an interview David Smith did with us last week, and very prominently mentions this great podcast. We urge you to check it out. Google Weird Al Guardian or check out group.2000inch.com for a link to the article. Well, we didn't think it could happen, but Weird Al has added yet another U.S. tour date to the 2023 leg of his The Unfortunate Return of the Ridiculously Self-Indulgent Ill-Advised Vanity Tour. Just prior to the four makeup dates previously announced for February 2023, Weird Al will also perform at the Kalamazoo State Theater in Kalamazoo, Michigan on Thursday, February 2nd. Tickets go on sale to the general public this Friday, November 18th, with a pre-sale happening tomorrow, November 17th. For more information, visit the tour page at weirdal.com. This episode is brought to you in part by Vegan Burrito Restaurant Burrito Burrito in Troy, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in the quesadilla burrito burrito and wizard burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, or we'll hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouth-watering, loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit burritosquared.com and wizardburger.com to order ahead. All of our incessant watching of Weird the Al Yankovic story has seemed to have paid off. Roku has reported that it is the most watched program in Roku Channel's history. The Roku Channel was launched just over five years ago, and other programs include... Uh... Um... Uh... Well, surely people are tuning in to see the Emmy Award deserving performances by Tough Biker Number 7 and Tough Biker Number 8. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast, congratulations to Weird the Al Yankovic Story and the Roku Channel for setting and breaking records. And you're welcome. 
Promotion for Weird the Al Yankovic Story continues, and if you've been watching some of the television appearances that Weird Al, Daniel, and Evan have appeared on lately, you may also have noticed a few other familiar faces and or body parts. That's right. Several of the shows have featured clips from the movie, including clips from the biker bar scene. To date, Dave and I, I, I mean, uh, tough biker number seven and tough biker number eight have shown up on The View, Nightline, The Drew Barrymore Show, and CBS Mornings. If you find any others, please share them in our official Facebook group over at group.2000inch.com so others can enjoy them as well. Weird Al has had his second film released this month, and this one's called The Soccer Football Movie and is available to watch right now over on Netflix. In the film, Weird Al voices the character Weird Al. It's kind of a stretch and definitely a departure from the other roles he's been playing recently. Our research team claims that there are actually other podcasts out there that you can listen to, which is surprising to us, but we're told that Weird Al is expected to be on today's episode of Fresh Air on NPR, hosted by Terry Gross. And apparently Weird Al was also a guest on this week's episode of Bill Maher's Club Random Podcast. Check out the interview for everything from Bill partaking in cinnamon roll incense to discussing pooping on the tour bus. Well, that certainly is a very interesting interview. Well, speaking of interesting interviews, Oprah Winfrey will be interviewing Quinta Brunson on OWN for OWN Spotlight on November 26th at 9 p.m. Burrito Burrito Time and Hollywood Star Time and 8 p.m. Biggest Ball of Twine in Minnesota Time. Quinta recently portrayed Oprah in We're the Al Yankovic Story, so it'll be interesting to see how that's addressed in the interview. Weird Al appeared as a category on the Leah Remini-hosted game show People Puzzler on the Game Show Network, episode three of season three. All right, Ethan, let's see if you can get these. I'm going to test you. All right, let's have one down, please. Radio host, Doctor, who gave him his big break, starts with a D and is seven letters. Um, h- how about two down instead? Sure. Singer that Al parodied on Like a Surgeon starts with an M and is also seven letters. Uh, I think I gotta pass on over to three across, please. Instrument Al Squeezes starts with an A and is nine letters. Uh, I give up, Dave. This is impossible. There's no answers that fit within those confines. Well, I guess you'll just have to tune in to People Puzzler and see what those answers are. All right, all right. I'll start looking for reruns. Well, another surprising Weird Al interview has popped up. And this one is none other than by our friend and past guest of the podcast, Mike Minnick. Well, we're not quite sure how, but Mike scored an exclusive interview with Weird Al and was kind enough to share it with the Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast listening audience first. All right, take it away, Mike. Mike Minnick here with my special guest, Weird Al Yankovic. Al, welcome. You recently wrapped up a six-month, 130-stop tour. How you feeling? Somehow I made it through. You must be exhausted. Well, it's going to start all over again in a few months when you tour Europe. Those darn Russian spies won't leave me alone. What are you looking forward to most in Europe? Gonna make those Frenchies scream. Use a man, use a man, use a man. Now, as much as I would love to talk about the tour, we really do need to talk about your new movie. Don't spoil the big surprise. You've been doing a lot of interviews over the past two weeks. The press follows everywhere I go. And the movie is getting rave reviews. Like a plus plus, they all say. At first glance, you're an odd choice for a biopic. You've lived a famously clean lifestyle. My only addiction has to do with a flour tortilla. Before this movie, I thought I knew everything there was to know about you. Everything you know is wrong. Now, it shows your dad is kind of a tough guy, and your mom is very supportive. Were these accurate portrayals? Dad would be up at dawn, he'd be watering the lawn. Oh, maybe going fishing again. She'd tie me to the wall and stick a funnel in my mouth and force me nothing but sauerkraut until I was 26 and a half years old. Did you ever consider making a straight biopic? 
No, of course not. That would be stupid. Sorry, forget I ever brought it up. Now, when did you first meet Daniel Radcliffe? I met him in a swamp down in Dagobah. That doesn't sound right. Were you a fan of the Harry Potter movies? Well, I know we built the three. Al, I, I think you're messing up your Orphans with Magical Powers movies. Now, also in this film are Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna and Rain Wilson as Dr. D, Superstar. Now, there were many cameos in this film. We see Emo Phillips, Jack Black, Conan O'Brien. Was there anyone you didn't get? So you've had a successful recording career, a TV show, movies. What can we expect next? I should be there on Broadway. Well, I look forward to that. What are your plans for after the interview? I'll rest my bones and just chillax. Well, you've certainly earned it. Any final words? <laughs> yeah, that's about what I expected. Thank you. Wow, Mike, what a riveting interview. I haven't heard an interview with Weird Al that good since Dave and I interviewed Weird Al. Unfortunately, we have some sad news to share. Iconic comedian Gallagher passed away last Friday, November 11th, at the age of 76. Gallagher's signature comedy bit involved a handmade sledgehammer he called the Sledgeomatic, you know, a reference to Mr. Popeil's Vegomatic, which he would use to smash watermelons on stage onto his audience. And did you know that Weird Al's song Eat It is played over the ending credits to Gallagher's stand up comedy special, Melon Crazy? Gallagher's character, portrayed by Paul F. Tompkins, shows up in Weird the Al Yankovic story during the fan-favorite Dr. Demento pool party scene. Following the death of Queen Elizabeth II and the death of Coolio, this is the third celebrity portrayed in the film to pass away in such a short amount of time. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, Gil and Chill in Peace, Gallagher. And we have some more sad news to report. Our friend Frank Sanchez shared the news that drummer George Taylor has passed away. Along with Frank, George appeared on two song recordings with Weird Al that have never been formally released, American Slob and Number One with a Bullet. From all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast, our deepest condolences to everyone who knew George Taylor. Gil and Chill in peace. Our intern Frank will be posting the first few episodes from our weird bonus series exclusively for our Patreon family to hear first over at patreon.com slash 2000 inch in the very near future with additional episodes to follow. We are so very excited for you to hear all about it. And we've also recorded bonus episode concert reviews for every single concert that either Ethan or myself have attended on this tour as well. So stay tuned to our official Patreon page at patreon.com slash 2000 inch as intern Frank will share those over there first as soon as they are ready. Our next guest is someone we recorded with way back in September and we've been dying to share it with you. And now that the film is out, we can... Dave and I are absolutely thrilled to be welcoming Weird Al onto the podcast. Well, maybe not exactly Weird Al. It is the actor who played Teenage Al in Weird the Al Yankovic Story. We are so thrilled to welcome David Bloom to the podcast. David, how's it going? <laughs> it's it's going great. How about y'all? How y'all doing? <laughs> We're great. <laughs> Ugh, I love it. David, you know, it's not often we get to actually... Uh, well, it is often we get to interview people who have worked with Weird Al, but it's not very often that we get to interview somebody who literally was Weird Al. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely, it's, it's probably a unique, um, <laughs> going to be a unique interview. You yeah. know, not only have I, have I worked with him, but I got a chance to play him, <laughs> which is, it, it's, it's fun. It's intimidating for sure. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> to, to have a, it's you put a lot on your shoulders already to play them, but um, I'm I'm really excited to to talk to you guys. <laughs> There's not many people out there who actually have played Weird Al in an official sense. I no, mean, there in isn't. a in a Weird Al actual thing. So I guess you know, just skipping right to it, were you a, f a fan of Al when you found out, and what was your reaction when you were cast as Teenage oh, Al? Oh yeah, you know, a, a long because I grew up. I was born in 01. So I grew up with Weird Al in a different way than a lot of maybe your traditional Weird Al fan would. It was more of like, uh, it already happened. You know, there, there was a nostalgia <laughs> factor to it that was like, so when I grew up when I, when I was a kid, 
my friend and I, um, whom I still talk to today, uh, we were obsessed. We, we knew all about him and this and that. Um, and it was such a fun audition to get. And, you know, because the movie is very satirical, but it also is like, it's serious, but because it's serious, it's just even more satirical. <laughs> so it, it, which is, it's, it's great, but my audition scenes were, it, it ranged from like a lighthearted scene to just a really heavy emotion, like some of the most emotional acting I've done in a long time comes in this weird Al biopic, which is such a cool thing to be able to say. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, it was, it was wonderful to get this part because this was even, you know, this was before I knew who was in it or what it was or anything or where it was. It was just, it was an audition. It was a Weird Al thing. I think I sound like him. I think I look like him. So I thought that was kind of working for me anyway. But I just, you know, I, I, it had been such a, I took a nice little break from acting since I uh, started when I was a kid. And this was the first job that I got coming back into it. Um, so it was just, it was such a high. And this was such a high to be able to do from being able to, I mean, getting the call that, I got the part, which is just, if you're an actor, that's just a great feeling. Um, <laughs> to, not. yeah, to talking with, you know, to, to talking with producers and talking with costumes and going to fittings and you'll love this, getting accordion lessons. <laughs> so awesome. All of that to the point of, it was really, and it was a surreal, you know, I'll kind of dive into it a little bit. It was a surreal experience to actually film it because my first, my first two days were the last two days of production. And it oh, was, wow. it was quick. It was, it was a 16 day just sprint of a production. And my first day was Daniel Radcliffe's last day which was very surreal to kind of come into this whole world that had already been set up and created and, and to be able to go. And my, my first, my first scenes were the scenes that I did with, um, uh, with Toby that were very, you know, it was a scene that was emotional and heavy and, 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 you know, ruined my voice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it was such a, it was, you know, it was, it's been so surreal from the minute that I got the email that said, you know, they're moving past putting you on a veil to, I guess, you know, filming it to be in here now and watching it finally come to fruition because we filmed in what, March. I want to say we filmed in March. Was it late April, early March? Wow, it's been a long time. Um, to now where we are in September to watch it exist and be here and be able yeah. to look at the trailer. And I'm sure, you know, the, the the film itself and being able to see it all come together and all the stuff that I filmed it's it's still it's still surreal to me it's still <laughs> you know it, it's just such a I can understand that completely it's yeah <laughs> you know being being Weird Al fans obviously ourselves Dave and I oh uh, no I you know we, I'd assume you guys are at least a little bit fans <laughs> I mean, we <laughs> we got to be just extras in the film, and the surrealness oh, hasn't wonderful. hasn't worn off. And the fact that you got to play Al and play such such pivotal scenes is just that's just so incredible. Mm, it was wonderful. That's yeah, I love to that's hear great that. that they that. <laughs> oh no, that's great. That, <laughs> I know you guys were you were telling me uh, when you wrote to me that you were. And, uh, I think that's just. I think that's fantastic. I think that's so wonderful <laughs> that that y'all are able to see it. And that, I mean, for you, for you two, that must have been just, oh my god, it was. <laughs> it was. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh my god, oh yeah. We, we still have not come down from the high from from getting to see the movie and for getting to see us up on the big screen. That yeah, was incredible. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. Before we get into Weird the Al Yankovic story, which I we definitely want to talk to you all about that, I would just love it if you could, for our listeners, give us a little background on yourself. You know, uh, how did you get into acting? What was your first role? And of course, you touched on a little bit, but uh, when did you become a Weird Al fan? Most important. Oh, my God. I mean, I became a Weird Al fan since I was very, very young. Like I said, me and my friend would just spend... Uh, my buddy Sam and I would spend hours on YouTube 
just you know old you old youtube like oh eight <laughs> youtube like like yeah. really like you know so it, it was just kind of something that like you know when you are four years old and you kind of come into consciousness and you just things just kind of appear and that's just how it is that was kind of what it was like with with al it was like that music that personality i I felt like I'd never not known who that was. Wow. <laughs> so it, it feel, it, I've, I've had a couple conversations with people telling them what I'm doing. And most people say, oh, that's great. That's so cool. Very few are like, uh, who's, who's that? Who's right. weird Al? <laughs> Excuse me? So it's, to me, it's something that it's like, since I can remember, I've never not known who that is. That per you know, the personality, the shirts, the shoes, yeah. the hair, the this, the music, the accordion. Like it's just it's one of those things that I feel like everyone just you just know. And I think the first song that I remember listening to was and it's still my favorite because it's the most nostalgic to me was Eat It. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I think is I think yeah. it's the first one. It's so nostalgic to me. I heard I, I think I heard that song before I heard Beat It. Um <laughs> So I didn't really know what it was par parodying. I just was like, oh, this is cute. I like this. <laughs> um, but so for me, I, I started acting when I was really young. I started acting when I was about 10 years old. Um, and I kind of went through the just, you know, your generic young actor. I mean, I don't want to say generic, but, you know, a, a very typical young actor circuit just you get the agent, you get the, the commercial agent, you go out for auditions, you do a couple, all of a sudden, you know, I booked a commercial when I was 10, and my first role was two scenes in CSI New York when I was 12. Wow. Um, which was super cool for me to do, because I was 12, and I was just, you know, breaking into this industry. Mm -hmm. um, right. And I was, I mean, I am so fortunate, and I've been so fortunate to be able to work um really breaking out i mean breaking out you know being able to have a couple jobs when i was 14 um which is now that i'm in my 20s it's a much different world to be in but you know i worked on a couple different shows i was able to be in um the 2015 wet hot american summer on netflix right. which was just such a like i mean people on people on names and names and comedy and funny and just <laughs> i'm four i'm 13 years old being thrown into that world just like hey here you go here's show alter and david wayne and working with them and, and so that kind of just put me into this business and i i worked and worked um just a couple different spots on a couple different shows here and there i still got a lot of things that kind of linger um and it was it was such a fun time you know people coming up to me and telling me they loved stuff and and even still, you know, I look a lot different and I sound a lot different and I am different than when I was 13. But, you know, to be able to hear people still say like, oh, my God, I saw you in this and I loved it when yeah, I know you were 14 years old. But I'm like, oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> but it's so I've been really fortunate with it and I kind of just grew up with it. Uh, that was really my childhood for, for better and worse. Um, and when I got to. When I got to the end of high school, I had a completely, you know, different career path change. I, I graduated high school. Um, I went to college. I am a, and I still technically am in college. Um, I'm a journalism major. I'm a sports journalism major. Cool. So, Ooh, cool. Broadcast yeah. journalism, radio, TV, this and that very um <laughs> very very used to to radio and all that um so it was just such a weird change i went to school in arizona for a year pandemic hit ba -ba -ba, get back into acting after what had been a four-year hiatus and now i'm doing this now i'm here I'm d i love it i'm doing what i love um i get to play a young weird owl um i <laughs> I've worked a couple times this year, um, just finished up a feature film. So it's like, it's, that's, I mean, that's kind of like the broad basic history of who I am um, in, re in relation to this, but it's, 
Um, and to be able to, to, to film this and do this, it's just been, you know, yeah. to, to, to be this role and be this part, even if it was for two days, you know, it was months of, of, uh, you know, pre-production and fittings and, and, and wig and this and that <laughs> two amazing days that I was able to come film with, I mean, Al, obviously Radcliffe's up in, just incredible. Eric Appel is wonderful and hilarious and so smart and gifted and talented and to be able to work with them. Like that's, it, it's a long road to be here, but that's kind of like my, uh, my little, my, my little backstory. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't want to gloss over wet, hot American summer, the series you're in. No, no, please don't. Because Weird Al was in two episodes. Did you have yes. any crossover? Yes, with he was. At that point? Yeah, I was, I'm sure you know what he did in, um, I won't go, you know, when doing 2015s, when Americans have a weird out that, so he, <laughs> the day that he came in and he did his, um, like his hypnotist bit, I was there sitting in the back, wow. our little scene that me and the three other kids do in that thing. We're just sitting in the back watching him. I didn't get a chance to meet him that day, I think, cause it was so quick and they were just moving at such a great pace and he did his stuff. He was out. Yeah. So he turned around, filmed our little scene. Um, but I did get to meet him at the rap party. Oh, cool. And oh, cool. Very, that was, that was like, a, that was such a, I know we're both in the movie together, but I'm a fan. Like, I, you know, I have a picture, but, 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 um, more, more in like, uh, hey, we're, we're in the same show. May I take a picture with you? Then a like, uh, oh my God, please, can I have a picture? But <laughs> that was the first time that I met him. Um, so we were both in that, which was great. And then cut to, oh my God, seven years later? Jesus. Wow. Yeah, six, seven years later, and we're here filming this, being him. You know, he was there every day on set. He was hands-on. He was just himself and, and, and wonderful and helpful and guiding and you know, he was like, you turn to, you do a scene, you turn to the director, you look how, what, you know, what does Eric think? You turn to Al, what does Al think? <laughs> like, it was just, he was such a, <laughs> yeah, such a part of it. So his, I mean, his, his comedic talent is all over this project and all over this, um, this movie, which I'm sure you, you have recognized and, yeah. and seen. Oh, so it's just, sure, it's, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a, it's such a, just, him in a in a movie like it's so self-aware and <laughs> funny and just it's what he uh, if he was gonna make a movie about himself this is exactly what it would be and the fact that you have someone like daniel radcliffe who i was shocked to see was in this movie playing him like that's okay and then when you see what he does you're like oh my god yes there's no one else at this point <laughs> And he sounds, right. and he sounds, and I'm, and I'm just at this point, just kind of gushing over people, but he sounds like, just like it. he, <laughs> I'm yeah. just, just sh shocked. So when we talk about what on American summer. <laughs> yes. There's so much more to talk about. And I, 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 I sort of want to go chronologically through weird before we get into, you know, what you were actually doing on set and what you are doing to prepare. Um, when did you find out about the audition? How did it come, you know, how were you made aware of this role in this film? And uh, I would love to hear all about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it was a very standard um, email from the agents, from the manager. Hey, uh, new appointment for you, blah, 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 blah film a self-tape, turn it in by Monday, whatever. So it was just kind of like, here's the sides, learn it, coach it, do this. And that was in about December. I think that was like, oh, was that like early December? Okay. And then I okay. didn't hear back for a month, which, oh, wow. you know, when you're, you do this a lot, you kind of assume, okay, whatever. I proud of my tape i thought it was great i thought i really you know i gave a lot and then i hear back and hey they really loved your thing they want to you know this is about january ish they want to uh put you on a veil which is just saying hey pin these dates and 
about a week later, I heard back and they're like, hey, we want to move forward. And pretty much uh, you got it. Wow. And from, from one submission? Yeah. From one submission. Wow. One take. Three, four scenes. So you, I mean, being a Weird Al fan, getting this role, do you treat the, the audition differently than you do other roles? It was very, you know, what was interesting about it was yes and no, because not to say that there's any role, and I'm sure a lot of people will understand this, not to say that there's any role that I don't want, because I, you know, I, I'm not, I, I, I want to work, and this is what right. my career, I want to be able to build it and grow, but when you really want something more than maybe just the average, you get even more nervous about it. Like you start, like, like, it's like, okay, this one's a throwaway. This one's whatever. This one I want. So you start to, eat, the stakes go higher for yourself because it's like, oh, this <laughs> right. would mean so much more. It's such a higher high and a lower low um, than just a whatever, throw it away and move on. Um, there really wasn't any different prep. I'd say, because it was the scenes, and I recognize this, were just, I mean, they were just scenes of a young, shy kid that wanted at the same time to be himself, but kind of mold to what his parents wanted him to be, and, you know, nervous to break out, and obviously, you know, you got your allegory, you know, you got your, your accordion is like, you know, drugs, but at the same time, it's like being a rock star and <laughs> all of that to the point yeah. where mentally you just kind of substitute it. You're like, okay, this may feel, and I'm sure if you didn't know who Weird Al was, reading the thing, you're like, accordion, this is stupid. What are you even talking about? <laughs> if you get it, if you kind of get it, you're like, oh, I, okay, it's just, it, it means like, like drugs. Like, that's, I mean, that's how it was treated the whole thing i mean right. when um um when 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 kip and robbie come out with with the accordion hold it i'm not sure um which parts made it in but um when they're holding it over their heads so like what i found walking in <laughs> um right just i you know the you play it like oh you're playing it like if anyone sees you with that, you're going to get in the most trouble you've ever been in your life and everything you love is going to go away. <laughs> so, you, you know, you you just mentally make those substitutions and I played it just very real, very genuine, very, like, it was a real drama, like, and that's kind of the comedy of it in, in just the, you know, tonally, but I just... I gave it the prep work. I, I I gave it the time. I was excited to see, oh my God, Weird Al is doing a movie. That's kind of how I found out about the fact that there is a Weird Al biopic in the works right. was that audition. Right, yeah. It wasn't announced at that point. No, no. So it was, you know, and it was almost, I mean, almost, it was an extreme honor to be able to book it because out of all the kids, out of, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 20 years old. I'm not, I'm not a kid. Um, but out of all the people that, submitted tapes out of all the people that considered that were considered for this it was me and that's such a i mean that's always going to be an honor as an actor but for for something like this it's a few there's a few things that for something like this feels just humbling not humbling but just wonderful and appreciative um just you know prideful is being able to be selected for something like this and just you know i was proud of it i was proud of myself i'm proud to be a part of it i you know promote the hell out of it as much as i can i'm, I'm so proud to have filmed it and have worked on it and be a part of it and the work that i've done on it and just everything about it and everyone that's been a part of it um so to be able to just do it and and do this audition and have those next steps go through and you know get the fitting and the, and the wig and the this and that yeah it's just i'm just i'm i'm real proud like i'm real proud of it yeah hey, it's, it's a great performance it's a great role it's any Thank any you. uh actor should hope to put, get to play weird al someday but let me let me ask you <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> let me ask you david when you're doing the audition have they sent you a script or did they just basically tell you here's roughly what we want have you seen a script at this point oh no um 
I don't know. No, they didn't. Most of the time, you won't get a script. I mean, unless it's like a big main character. Like, you know, you're in the entire thing and the whole thing revolves around like second okay. build, first build. Then you'll probably get a script. But for something like this, that's four or five scenes, they don't, you know, it's just, I mean, the context is all there. I didn't, there was, I pretty much did all of it for my audition. I mean, I did the scene on the bus. I did the scene, um, I did the scene before the party where I'm running in and saying, guys, I gotta get out of here. I can't do this. But And then I did the scene at the end. I, okay. I did it all the way up to playing the accordion for everybody and the cops coming in. And then I did the scene uh, with Toby. With the with the screaming and the yelling and the uh, oh, um, wow, you know you'll see one day, you know not ar- not technically the best, but arguably the, you know, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> I which is one of the best so, lines so, in the film, by the way. <laughs> it's one of the best. It's so oh, yeah. that was such a that was such a fun line because I was real tempted to, um, and it's just from a, a acting standpoint. I was real tempted to almost like turn it all off, like just go super just anger and passion and then just kind of go back to normal but honestly the just saying that line just so frustrated and so <laughs> just done <laughs> and just i mean I, my whole my voice was ruined for like two days after that shift because of how much Ooh. i was just <laughs> impressed i i was like i know i'm screaming technically every singing and acting coach would hate me right now because of the way i'm screaming but it's just you know how it, how the garage is going to do it. Right. So, <laughs> but to be able to scream those lines as well, that's, that's my favorite line in the entire film. One of my favorites. Uh, there's a couple things yes. in the film that are that I just, especially for the parts that I was able to do, um, that I that are my favorite. And that's definitely up there. Um, but just playing it all. I mean, oh, yeah, it was. Definitely. You get the audition, and the you know obviously you can recognize that there is a satire in it. I mean, by that line alone, you're like, oh, this, it's satirical. But <laughs> it's, you play it serious because of how, we're all talking about accordions, but if you play it serious, then it's funnier than if you just, like, are joking around. That's right. the joke. Obvi- that's satire, obviously. Um, I feel like I'm explaining the genre at this point. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> which, I, yeah. Hey, Weird Al fans, so you don't always have to, like, be serious. Um, no, so, um, <laughs> but, yeah, God, you know, you just prepare like it's just the most dramatic role you've ever done. And you put it through and hope for the best. And it's just, you know, the, be- <laughs> the best happens. Well, to comment on, you know, what you said about, like, your, you know, acting and vocal teachers would not have liked what you did. You know, as oh, God, no. someone who watched the film... You did it perfectly. Like you shouldn't have done oh, anything well, different. You. It's just right. it's such no. A, thank a you great so much. Oh, that means the world and more. Oh, I'm so I'm. Oh, thank you so much. I know the the. There's obviously there's a way to scream without shredding your vocal cords, and I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't I didn't do it for the audition. I didn't do it for any of the takes. So by the time I was that that weekend, because we filmed that on a Friday and the next day was a Monday. So that weekend I just I couldn't speak. I was so nervous for the next day. I'm like, oh, I have like three, four more scenes to do. <laughs> like I gotta kinda have my voice up a little bit and talk and <laughs> my voice. <laughs> it was so it was so trash by the end of that because I was just I wanted it to be natural. And if you're really, you know, at your wit's end and screaming at your dad, then obviously you're not going to like take a big deep breath and go to your diaphragm and <laughs> right, gonna, right. You know, scream from your throat. And <laughs> I'm really glad I'm really glad it played because that's a thing that Oh yeah. In this in my career, I'm always like, "Oh my god, I thought I liked it, does it play?" And I'm really glad that it you know, that it plays through for you know, you guys who are such big fans of it and people that have seen it, I'm really glad that it 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 works. That makes me really that makes me really happy. At what point do you actually get the script, uh, or have you already because you've done the audition, you already know what your lines are? So, is there any more prep involved 
in the couple months before you start shooting? Anything else going on, or you just show up on set and ready to go? Well, I mean, at that point, I I get this. I eventually do get the script. Um, give it a read. Partly out of you know, I want to know what's going on. I know a lot of it doesn't even have to do with me, but I'm, I mean, it's the weird out biopic. Obviously, I'm going to read the script. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, like you can't. Even, oh no, no, thank you. Actually, I don't want to know what's going on. <laughs> um, but at that point, it's just you dive as deep as you can for the audition, hoping you'll be able to revisit it and actually work on it, and. You know, when you do an audition, you kind of just, you do it, you mentally toss it away. If it comes back up, it comes back up. If it doesn't, you just do the next one. And that was kind of the mentality for a little bit. And this was an extra long period of time before I heard back. But hearing back and getting to work on it further, that's when you pick it back up and you start looking at it in a way that's, I'm not doing this to kind of prove myself. I've proven myself at this point. Now I'm doing it to find the best version of it. And then, you know, you look at it, you, you, get, the, you get the words down first and foremost. I mean, we did, we were able to kind of play a little bit and improv a little bit back and forth, but you get the words down enough to the point where, I mean, you, you want to get them all down. But so you can make those deeper choices and really play with it. And the prep is just, is knowing it, is coming in with, distinct choices and options and then just being coachable being teachable in that way that once you work with the director and the writer and the this and you know al and eric and you start talking with them and hey try it like this or give me more of this or that's a great choice but you know give me something different then all of a sudden you find something in it that you go back to your audition scene and you look at it and you're like oh really I booked it off of this. The way that I was able to do it and the actual thing is so much better because you find it with the people that spend their entire, you know, so, so much time directing it. I mean, writing it, being it right. to the point where you get in front of them and they tell you how, how they see it and you kind of can join those and you mm. go back and forth on it. It's like a real artistic just conversation of hey how do we want to play this and sometimes you come in the director's like oh that's great love it sometimes he's like or she's like you know that's great however tonally try it this way or this way or speed it up or slow it down or it just you find it when you're in the space you find it when you're with the other actors and, and working with 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 toby was just oh my god he's, he's hilarious he's he's wonderful he's funny he's I, I'm sure that every single shot that isn't on me, I'm there for eyeline laughing my ass off because I couldn't <laughs> contain it at a certain point because the way he would just kind of go off and get right in my face, it's, it's very hard not to break at that point, <laughs> um, which is great why it's that it's not live, but, you know, he's wonderful when you get to actually work with everyone else that's not just a reader and a camera, it, it starts becoming what it is and you find it. And I think that what yeah. we were able to find on the day was just so funny and, and smart. And really, like I was saying before, it's been a long time since I've done anything this dramatic and it probably will be. And it's just honest and real and raw. And it comes from the Weird Al biopic. <laughs> yep. That's where I. That's that's where I get the drama. Now I think to anyone listening, I think it's pretty clear that you know the scenes that you were in are not what actually happened in Weird Al's life. But you know you are no, you are I playing. Say. Yeah, but you are playing. You know a teenage Al, and I'm curious what sort of advice or context Al was able to provide about when he was a teen to you for the role. You know, it wasn't. It's obviously, you know, not exact what happened i mean clearly um right so there is <laughs> there is a level of it not being exactly who al is you know you you uh you guys were were great in your you know breaking down the whole 
trailer of it, I, 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 I appreciate that I do look like him. That is something that, um, oh, oh for sure. I, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. No, that was something that I was, that, that I feel helped my case as well as just help me be this character. Um, but the fact that it's not the exact version of him, that it's kind of a nuanced movie satirical in a bubble version, it, it kind of let me play with it and find it beyond just trying to be an exact replica of who he was when he was 14. So he didn't necessarily give me a ton of like, when I was 14, I had this and this and this. Because it's pretty much, you can, at least I got it from what was written down and the right. way it was, and the way that others were playing it and the way that uh-huh. I was being helped play it and the the notes that I were that I was being given and the direction of how to play it, I felt very much was, okay, this is kind of how he would do it. I mean, he, he wrote the thing, so right. might as well. Right. But, you know, it was more of just having him on set to be able to oversee it and be there and just, you know, laugh and love it and talk to him and, and just watch it, direct it, you know, Eric directed it, but you know what I mean? Uh, just right. give it, just give it his own, everything on set was such a help because there were a lot of times where you do a scene and a couple more times say to that was great. And then there are times where, you know, he really kind of comes in with that direction and that advice and saying, hey, I mean, at the end of the day, I am playing him. So who else to give me advice on, on, on notes and character and, you know, how to make it look like I'm playing the accordion than Ali Yankovic? <laughs> yeah, well, well, let's talk about that a little bit because th- that's, mm. that's in the movie you are, you know, you're playing the accordion and i'm just curious you know had you ever played accordion before that and uh, what was what was involved to get you up to speed to be able to play the accordion like that oh well i really um i'd never really played an accordion like that i mean you know you have your little baby accordions that don't really do nothing but you know give you the general concept but they after a while of kind of getting fitting dates down and information and contacts, they kind of came to me with this, hey, we want you to take accordion lessons. And it was only needed me to take about a week. But hey, we want you to take about four or five, two hour, hour long accordion lessons. Just get the basics of it. They sent me over an accordion. And the thing was beautiful. Um, and sounded incredible. Uh, and at that point, it was the first time that I really held an actual accordion. Oh, it's wow. Heavy. <laughs> it's so heavy. And I don't weigh a lot. So it, you know, knocks me over a little bit, but <laughs> you strap it to your, to your chest. And it's like wearing a backpack the wrong way. And at that point, it's, I do have, and which was a delight to, um, my, the accordion teacher that they got me um, was that I do have a musical background and I do have, I play a couple instruments and I have musical knowledge. So it wasn't complicated to get me in there with the theory and the, you know, the, I've explained how the accordion works to uh, more people than I thought it ever have to at this point. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, it's, it's one of the only instruments in the world where a whole part of it, you just, you can't see. Like, you just, you can't see your left hand. And there's maybe, there's at least one notch. There's one notch in the second row for your C. After that, maybe, I think on the E and the other side is the D or the A minor or something. Um, but the ones that I played, it had one little bump, one little divot, and that was on the C. And then you have all these rows. You have your bass, your counter bass, and your your third, or your major triad, your minor triad, uh, your seventh, and your diminished. And it's just sometimes you'll think you're playing the right thing and you're not. And then the other on the other hand, you've got just a piano. It's a piano accordion. So you have it's such a unique, weird instrument that I never thought I'd actually <laughs> play. 
So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, to sit there and kind of take out, and then also at the same time, you're doing all that and you're you're moving the bellows in and out. And it was, it was really fun actually to, to pick it up and play it and mess with it. And, you know, just, you never play the piano that way. Cause you always play it in front of you, but never to the side right. and you, you're stretched out and you're standing the right way. And they got to me and like I said, they had me do a week's worth of accordion lessons. And it was only really to kind of get the feel and to just kind of get that little ending bit of, and they were so funny. They, they, they came to me the day of my fitting. They're like, hey, we want to pull you aside and just show you what we want you to play. And they start playing the whole clarinet polka for me. And I was kind of, I was like, I was sitting there and I'm just, and this is maybe a couple weeks out of filming, if. No, this is maybe about two weeks. And I'm sitting there just listening to it, trying to like dissect where it's going. And so nervous to the point where I'm like, you want me to play this entire thing? Like, and then the ending happens. Ba, 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 and then that, that's all we want you to learn how to play. I'm like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, that, that I can do. So I, so I was like, at first I thought they wanted me to learn to play the whole thing. Um... <laughs> And like, no, that, that will be fine. And then we'll just have you play the ending. So I pretty much, I mean, for the most part, you have the shot of my face, you know, bopping around with the accordion, just kind of move my hands up and down, um, which Al was very helpful of how to make it look like I was playing the accordion. And then you get a hand double in there, mm. playing the whole real actual clarinet polka on right. the accordion with the 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 bass side and the piano side and the bellows i mean i've never seen someone i mean you don't really see a lot of people play the accordion live unless you're looking for it so <laughs> it's I was just beyond impressed um but we also we also had to do um when we were actually filming it's kind of getting a little more into the actual filming of it when we were getting into filming we had to take for the scene where um, they're like, hey, you try it. I'm like, no, no, no. And they're, you know, playing like, fine, give it to me. And I put it on. You had to take the accordion, put it on the ground, cut, and then reset with me on it, holding it. Because it was just, you couldn't, there was no way to pass it back and forth and put it on because it was just right, so the, the straps. clunky <laughs> and heavy. And, yeah. you know. There was no, like, it's not like, hey, try, you know, playing the guitar. Oh, here you go. It was like, hey. <laughs> and that was almost a, that was almost what was so funny about it, too, was just, I mean, they, they'd take it, and then they put it on their shoulders, and they'd, they'd play it. And then he was, like, leaning in, you know, playing. I think he was playing chopsticks on it, you know, just batting it around a little bit, you know, kind of turning his head, trying to – so it was <laughs> – <laughs> to watch them actually like do it and just how massive and how clunky and how heavy the instrument actually is plays so well um or at least it did on the day and i'm assuming that it did in the actual film um <laughs> right in in a way that it's it was it was like a good two weeks i spent with an accordion that i never thought i would in my life and it was such a unique wow like now if i'm ever at a polka party and someone's passing around an accordion <laughs> I can do something. I can. You got show it. Off you got it. it. I'm good. <laughs> oh my god! No, it was. It's fun, man. It's fun. So I like cool. it. Have you played it uh, since? Well, we need to stop the interview right there, but we will be back next episode with the exciting conclusion of our interview with David Bloom. Be sure to catch David in Disney's American Born Chinese in 2023. We know we will be. And for David Bloom related news and updates, be sure to give him a follow over at David H. Bloom on Instagram and Twitter. This episode is brought to you in part by Discover Darwin, promoting tourism in Darwin, Minnesota. Not only is historic Darwin, Minnesota a beautiful, it's also home to a beautiful Web East. Wait, did you say Web East? I sure did. Don't you think maybe you're supposed to say website? I don't think so. The people of Darwin tend not to make any mistakes. What about those who have visited Dassel? Anyway, what is a Web East? If you Google Darwin, Minnesota's Twine Ball, 
you'll see that the headline on Google for DarwinTwineBall.com says, Welcome to Darwin Twineball Web East. Uh, it seems like a typo to me. No, no, no. Web East. Website Ophile, a lover of websites, according to Urban Dictionary. It's not a real word, trust me. Anyone can add a definition on that website. Here, go refresh the page and read what the new definition for Web East is. So visit Darwin, Minnesota on your next expedition. Discover Darwin more than just the twine ball. And after you visit Darwin, Minnesota, be sure to attempt to visit the great Web East, discoverdarwin.com. Biz. This is a special hamster alert to the Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al Podcast broadcast alert system, sponsored by Jack Bateman. Hey, Ethan, you got any vacations planned? Yeah! Next summer, I'm headed to Peru. I can't wait to visit and taste their exquisite cuisine. No! No? I am going to Peru, Dave. I am. No, 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 you cannot go. <sighs> well, this better be good. And hamster-related, considering which ad we just happen to be having this conversation during. Since pre-colonial times, hamsters have been eaten by the Peruvians. Yuck! Ugh! I will cancel my trip to Peru, and instead, I'll go to Bolivia! No! Oh, no. Have the Bolivians eaten hamsters since pre-colonial times, too? Oh, wait, no. Those countries eat guinea pigs, not hamsters. Well, I already canceled my trips. Are you happy now? Yeah, I am. That is all for this week's very important special hamster alert via the Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast broadcast alert system. Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely positively free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Brito Brito, Jackson Scoggins, Discover Darwin, Jack Bateman, and Mark Heidenreich. Our podcast is also supported by everyone in our Patreon family, with special thanks to our amazing close personal friend level Patreon supporters, Zach, Zeb, Adriana, Ajax, Allison, Blair, Dana, Gus and Alicia, Jake, Javier, Kenneth, Kev, Matthew, Mike, NES, Josh, 64, Scott, UH, Jeff, and also thank you to Aaron and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our wonderful, wild, and wacky Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000inch. There are awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast, your own private RSS feed, and access to the secret episodes. And now would be a good time to join if you have not already, because not only will you be the first to hear our remaining The Unfortunate Return of the Ridiculously Self-Indulgent Ill-Advised Vanity Tour Contract Review bonus episodes, you will also be the first to hear our brand new We're the Al Yankovic Story Insider bonus episode series. And don't forget to check out our official merchandise over at shop.2000inch.com. Now that November is here and the cooler weather is starting to roll in, be sure to stock up on Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, Socks, to accompany your seasonally hairy legs. We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so be sure to join our Facebook community over at group.2000inch.com and be sure to visit our Discord server for even more riveting Weird Al and Red Rump Agouti-related conversations. You can find both of them linked on our website, as well as information about past episodes and guests over at weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And while you're there, click on ridiculously self-indulgent bonus episodes to follow along with our adventures on tour, or black and white and weird all over bonus episodes for our special series, where author John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his first book, page by page and picture by picture. Keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for subscribing and leaving reviews on your favorite podcast app. Make sure you are subscribed because not only does it help the podcast, it helps you pass those stubborn kidney stones. Plus, we also love it when we receive voicemail via our official patent pending 27 hour a day podcast hotline 347 Spatula. You might even hear your message in a future episode. Thank you once again to this episode's guest, David Bloom, and we also want to thank Mike Minnick, Frank Sanchez, and David Smith. Thank you to the Grammy Award winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song. And thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. 
And a big thank you to all of you, our loyal listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast. And until next time, remember to gill and chill. Be sure to tune in next episode for the exciting conclusion of our interview with David Bloom. Uh Uh-oh, Ethan. What's wrong, Dave? I'm afraid we might be out of compliance with the Canadian Broadcast Commission's regulation on podcast guests. Oh, no! Why do you say that? Well, it says right here on this paper that I'm holding just out of your reach that Regulation 372-5806 mentions that any podcast that covers the famous accordion players in an extremely specific genre of music must make an effort to have a guest that shares the same name as the podcast hosts. Wait, does it really say that? Let me see that paper. Ugh, too far away. I guess I'll have to take your word for it. Well, we've had a ton of Dave and Davids on, so I'm sure that covers us. Yes, but there have been no Ethan-named guests yet. So you're saying we need to interview someone named Ethan? No, I'm saying you need to change your name. To David. That was Dave and Ethan's 2,000-inch Weird Al podcast, episode 177-inch. You're all just a bunch of normals. Oh, no, I'd assume you guys are at least a little bit fancy.